What is up ladies and gentlemen, this is Aprilia AI and today we're going to be taking a look at the updated version of Adobe Firefly and basically showing what does this AI image generator has to offer. So one of the cool things about Adobe Firefly out of the bat is that this is free to use. There's no credit based system so you can prompt many as you want to my understanding. And yes, there will be a small watermark in the corner of the image in case you don't have any of the Adobe products. Obviously, I do have Photoshop and Premiere, which I'm subscribed to. So I don't have those watermarks on the images that I'm going to be prompting out. But for those people who are going to be generating image, they can use any type of a cropping tool to basically, you know, remove that potential watermark out. So it's very easy compared to like normal watermarks that exist. And there's a couple of cool features here and things that they are going to be adding like in the future like generative recolors are currently available text to image the generative fill which i've been using a lot in photoshop that is a really really handy tool so you can basically space out a certain part as you can see here there is like a part of the um shirt has been recolored so there's this is a really really good tool so in case you're like working out like i'm creating a thumbnail and i'm using like an image that is like a phone wallpaper or something but i need to have like a horizontal image I can use the generative fill to basically um, generate, you know, in the extensions on the size dimensions that I actually desire. And then there's the text effects, which I probably want to, you know, um, tackle in here first. So there's a lot of really cool things that people have been already building out with the texting. So the thing with text, outside from like the SDXL and another tool, which name I cannot remember right now, I haven't really seen a lot of impressive typing tools existing right now like mid journey still which is the one that i kind of you still use the most doesn't really have the ability to create very good text right now i'm sure by the end of the year start of quarter one most of these tools going to be having a very very good ability to basically generate any forms of letters and text so let's try out like actually oprelia ai and then i'm going to be typing in like metal glossy style so let's see what it's basically going to be generating for us. And there are all types of like presets here, like in terms of prompts, we have flowers, we have snakes, and we have driftwood, we have wires, we have balloons, bread toast. And here we see like, this is actually not too bad. Um, it always gives you four different prompts um, to choose from. And then there's even some match shapes. And um, what do we have? We even have fonts here. So that's pretty big. So let's see like how much like a Chinese letter would look like. In, in the same thing so um, then there's Japanese I think there's there's Korean even here so that's pretty impressive so we have different types of fonts here this is very like good if you're like doing some type of a, I don't know like some type of e-commerce shop or something you want it under your own name you can just create something a very like good thing we can also you know just after we have generated the image we have the ability to basically choose out any of the prompts um, the balloons I mean there's like some things that kind of look a bit iffy there um, there doesn't seem to be any like um, zooming type of thing. Uh, I can also submit to my Firefly gallery. As far as I know, these uh, images are uh, actual, what is it? Well, they are like on the public. So these are like broadcasted publicly on the gallery. And there's a steampunk. This is actually pretty impressive as well. You can see that there's a bit of like a white there. Um, there might be some ways to maybe uh, generate this on a different way. Let's try a different prompt here. So um, the text tool is really impressive. I mean, doing text on a Photoshop in general is pretty easy. So maybe this is something like you want to maybe use it as an inspiration or just like edit things out. As you can see, like there are some, you know, clutter here on the background, which is not good. But maybe there's like a different types of styles which are going to be generating you a lot more precise images uh, than the other like you can see it's like this is a lot more cleaner it doesn't have like so much it doesn't actually go beyond the dimensions or the extensions of the letters so that's pretty good so the text effects are pretty impressive i mean look at these uh, this is probably going to be getting the best results by doing one letter and you can technically just you know prompt them out one by one that is also an option you can go for so in case you are like looking for something to do like that i mean there's a lot of options here and i'm sure you can prompt out a lot more but let's go back into the the where the rubber hits the road which is the texture image or maybe we should look into the generative fill the generative fill is like i already kind of went into this explaining a bit 
and we can like choose areas here like you know this is different on like photoshop maybe maybe you're going to be doing leave a comment down below if you want to see a bit of a guide or a tutorial or showcase of the photoshop features and now we're going to be like uh, we can add some things this is really good like if there's like a picture you have of yourself you can like just erase the eyes and like add sunglasses okay look see here we got some wood and we got actually some rocks generated here as well but let's like try to like remove here keep and we're going to be adding this and here we're just going to be adding sunglasses so this is another very very cool tool i see this is more like a post editing so you have like already a cool picture which you have edited with some somewhere already and we're like look at this that's pretty impressive we have another one and we have a third one and yeah there's a bit of, bit of like a quality difference here maybe it doesn't always mesh out very much of the rest of the image but this is this is a really really good um, tool once again. So generative fill, um, you're gonna get best results by leaving the things empty, and you can do a lot of things with that. So let's go into the text image. Let's look at some of the showcases. So here are already <clears throat> things that are being generated with the version tool. So one of the things I want to pan out that I've seen, you know, when it, they always do these galleries, I remember when Dolly 2 came out, they always like put out the most impressive images on the front and they kind of hide away like more lower quality images. There are things that are definitely kind of, sometimes the eyes with this generator, maybe, maybe we're going to be trying out, let's try a Vogue model walking on a jungle. So let's see what we actually going to be getting here. And Let's look at some of the features here. So first of all, you have the ability to basically um, choose out in the Firefly one, which is, it's actually not very good. I mean, I'm gonna, just gonna be very honest. Like a lot of the things I've seen from Firefly one, not impressed. Um, there's a couple of aspect ratios here, landscape, square, portrait, and widescreen. Problem here is that there's not like, uh, there are some, some things that you might be wanting to generate which are not on these dimensions, maybe like nine to 16, which would be the phone wall, wall vapors, for example. So there are things that are, let me see, we can see actually, let's try out close up. Let's put female here so we get to have a bit of our understanding, but these are actually pretty good images. But I think the important here is obviously like seeing the facial details because usually we are generating humans. I think that's what the most people are generating. Not necessarily me, but the generic people are probably using AI tools to generate images from their friends or celebrities, whatever, Trump or Biden or etc. So let's see if these, can we actually zoom in? So that's one of the features we are not seeing here on on this platform. And this is actually not a very close up. So the uh, fingers are looking, there, well, there's one missing. There's weird like things, she's been great, you know, digging something or something. And you can also change out the visual intensity to an art and you can automatically also generate these things. You can add strength, which adjusts the style and matching effect. There's reference images you can use. So this is a really cool tool, which I'm gonna be showing you second. So, okay, these are not very, okay, this looks kind of creepy. This doesn't look that amazing. These are starting to look kind of weird, okay? Kind of reminded me of the early versions of Mid Journey. So there's also like these um, effects we can do, like we can do hyper-realistic here. And this is really good, like, just like a one click button like that we are able to change the art style from one to another like maybe we want to do something black and white and here we can see now it's like okay we are going for a more hyper realistic style these don't obviously look like human and you can see some uncanny valley here in terms of the dimensions the hairs are look very very off for example um let's let's put out the art out and let's try out like the matching image. So we want to want to create something stylish to this reference. And this allows us to basically just with, a, as I said, with a one click, we are able to transform the images within certain type of a style from um, these existing um, styles. So whatever it's watercolor, pencil, architectural sketches. So in case you want to I really like those when the humans are kind of made out of like architecture. There's 3D ones. And here you can see we went, went a lot of whole new different and not exactly a black and white here. Let's try out something of 3D nature here. And let's see what we're going to be getting. So there's a lot of really cool features here. Um, a lot of the post processing, and this is what probably Adobe is trying to do, is that they want you to generate these images and then you're going to be post processing them on Photoshop. You're going to be editing them on Photoshop. 
Okay, these kind of look um, not very 3D. Kind of creepy, actually. Well, this kind of looks semi-3D. Semi Let's try another one. So um, I'm, I'm liking this feature. I think it's more like uh, change the style of your image. We, we did a review just my last video, which was like changing your images into anime ones. I'm gonna link that a review in the cor corner from Art Ventures. But this one is also very good. But we can see like a lot of the image has been like, th these are not really reminiscing. And it, well, they are still kind of like within the parameter of the prompt. But I have to say that I am, I'm kind of impressed about this, still this this like um, feature here. But it maybe is taking the the images way too far frame uh, from the um, we, we can maybe just put out back to uh, back to visual intensity lower, and maybe we could try out like a portrait next. But basically, there are a lot of different things, colors and tones you can change, lighting. Uh, once again, we got a bit wild uh, results there, so it's maybe not so best creating realistic images. I mean, we're just experimenting a lot here in terms of the prompts, so you're going to be getting like kind of wild stuff. Um, and then you get also negative prompts here, but these these look like this is Dolly one stuff, so kind of kind of creepy. But let me let me try to prompt out the um, there was a good 3D image here. Let me let me try out this Corky here. So we're going to be using their prompt. And let's use a layered paper. This one is this one seems like a good idea. And then we're gonna be trying a sun synth wave. And then there's obviously the Adobe Express, which is Adobe Express. And this is basically like a post-processing um, tool where we can take our images we have generated, and uh, we can then like put them put them here to for editing. So this is kind of like. Um, you can sync them up or you can sync them directly to Photoshop. This is something you want to look into, but maybe we're going to do a, another video of that. Okay, so here we have our prompt. Um, it didn't really create, well, we can see the colors of the paints here are a bit different. And let's try out the synth wave here. Let's see what kind of results are. So now it's not going to be always giving us these very, very excellent results here, but you can also upload your own image for reference. So maybe this is the style we want to go. And now we definitely got a more synth wave wipe here. So this is very, very nice. These are pretty good. This could actually like, if they were a bit higher quality, a bit better poses and dimensions, like these could be maybe sold on on some of the stock sites. But that's kind of basically my rundown of the Adobe Firefly. I think there's people who have managed to do very impressive images here. But as you can see, when you pick out a lot of these gallery images, which are really, really good, Sometimes you're going to be seeing images that are just not on the same exact quality as the other prompted image. So there are certain specific images that this will be very, really good at doing. And it also kind of gives you a bit of a, like this toyful experimentation on what type of things you can do. And one of the best features obviously here that this is a free product, guys. And as for now, so you want to maybe, you know, get start prompting before they're going to be changing in for some type of payment system. Right now, I think they're training these things and maybe there's gonna be credit-based system or um, I don't know what they're gonna be doing. I don't think that they can sustain this, like doing this like for free forever. As long as there's gonna be a lot of people prompting stuff like I think we're gonna be seeing. No, oh, these are actually pretty good. Bit weird looking, but still decent. But that's pretty much my rundown of Adobe um, Firefly version two. And in case you have been trying it out yourself, what do you think about it? Is it better than Dolly 2? Is it better than Dolly 3? Is it better than Stable Diffusion or prefer it over Mid Journey? I would like to hear your thoughts about, uh, thoughts and opinions about that. Make sure to subscribe, like, and I will be seeing you guys on the next video. Cheers, I will be seeing you next time.